Now why don't you say go down on three? One, two, three. Are we good? Perfect. Okay. And put then that, in the background you put in the background <laughs> dancing queen for mother. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm not quite sure what that <laughs> Are we good? A couple of dancing queens. Mm -hmm. You ready, Linz? Yes. Okay, cool. Hi guys, in a paint tech. I'm here with Stefan, Ellis Discounter. We've had a full day of spraying, so now we've come to a point of the day where we've got to clean out the machine. And we're going to do two types of clean. We're going to do a quick rinse. So technically that's how I would clean my machine ready for tomorrow to be able to juice, take it on site, prime it up and get going again. Then we're going to do a deep clean, okay, to show you how we clean the manifold filter, the inline filter and just make sure it's absolutely spotless. After that we're going to do a little bit of maintenance. So let's, let's make a start. So what I need to do first is just tilt it back. The beauty of this particular li little machine is it's got a little stand that we can just lean it back, so dog leg brush, just take off the excess. Okay, the machine at the moment obviously is just draining a little bit, <coughs> and it's got some in there in the dumbbell. It's still got pressure, so let's make sure we turn that all the way around. Okay, just turn it off and gently, no, I'm sorry, gently release the pressure. Okay. So that's all the pain pretty much coming out. We're just going to leave the dump tube in the paint. We're going to swap it round for water. Okay. It's a bit of a, a quick change. Let's just flick that back on just, just for two secs. What we're going to do is swap one for the other. Let's drop it back into the water. Okay, just again, just give it a bit of a clean. Nothing major, it's just the fact that for me, I don't want to be dropping any kind of paint in a customer's house. So let's just make sure. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is save, obviously, what paint we've got left. So we're in the dump position. Okay, we're just going to turn the power back on. And we're just looking for when this changes from paint to water. Clearly, we can see that. So, what we're going to do instead of dirtying the water too much, just to have an empty pot or just a dirty pot, drop it in there. Literally, just a few seconds. Then, what we're going to do is take the gun. Take off the guard. We'll deal with that in a second. The tip and the guard is something altogether different. So we've still got to get the paint out of the hose. So what we're going to do is take off the trigger lock, pull the trigger first, put it in the prime position, and then give it a little bit of power. I generally shoot on the side of the tub because I want to see when it changes from paint to water. Pretty much there, look. So again, just put it on the side of the bucket. Pull the trigger first. There. It's just a quick rinse. Okay, that's good enough for me to pack up, uh, wind everything up, put it back in the van, and take it on to another job tomorrow and get it up and running. So that's, that's just a quick rinse. Only takes, what, two, three minutes. It's, it's not overcomplicated. Cool. In a second, what we're going to do is we will do a deep clean. Cool. We've just given it a quick rinse. Now we're going to give it a deep clean. So what we're going to do is take the dump tube, turn the dump position. Okay. We just give it a little bit. Okay. 
We need to clean the manifold, we need to clean the inline, because if not, you're just never going to get it clean. It's just going to keep pulling dirty water through. What do you mean by inline? Inline, good point. It's what we call the, uh, the filter in the gun. So it's the gun filter. We just call it inline filter. It's like, um, here, this is this for us is, we call it the dump. So it's, it's this, this here is what we call the dump tube, which is, let's say, the re return tube. Uh, it's just one of those things that we find when we're talking to the guys on site, it's easier to say, could you just dump the pressure, could you dump the, the paint? So we just, we just refer to it as a dump tube. And again, when we do this, we call it inline, because it's, it's in line with the hose. Therefore, this becomes technically, I suppose it's a nickname, we just call it inline filter. Uh, it's just, just a way we, we use our technology. It's just the gun filter. It's just the gun filter. So we'll take out the manifold filter first, okay? The chances are we're gonna get a little bit of runner residue. Okay, little trick here is... Lubricated a bit. Yeah. yeah. Just add a little bit of TSL or any form of lubricant, depending on what your machine is, uh, which is really cool. Okay. Especially if you have an older sprayer, um, this one has a th thread which is already a bit bigger, but there are older sprayers around where you have a thinner thread and then um, it gets, m gets more complicated if it's not looped or you have some old paint hanging there. So um, that helps a lot if you put a bit of oil on it. I mean, you can literally remove all of this, uh, take it to the sink, but most of the time on, on site you have literally just got a bucket of water. So we just, we don't go mad. Okay. And then we take the spring, check the spring, make sure the spring's not split, make sure the spring's not got any actual issues, and uh, give it a good clean. Again, you don't have to go mad, because we're gonna actually put a lot of, we're gonna put a lot of water through this. So we just get the majority of it off, okay. I've got girly fingers, which is cool because I can get inside the, the filter, but I can't touch at the end. Okay. Again, we just plant that in there. Okay. And not to overthink it. Okay. This, yeah, you could uh, put a rag in there, give it a clean, you can put a sponge in there. What we're going to do is we're just going to. Give it a little white, nothing major. Okay. And it goes down great, and it's just finger tight, and that's fine. That one's down, but the trick is that we found over the years, a way to be able to clean the machine quite quickly is literally, uh, everybody removes the head, which is really cool. Everybody cleans the filter, which is, which is good practice. But the problem is, what they do is, Move the filter, okay. Now, I can go back to the filter in a second, whereas most people would actually spend the time cleaning the filter. So we've broken the head off, okay, we've removed the filter, we just drop that in there. And then all we're going to do is turn it in line. And just crank the pressure. The idea is, just by leaving this, the size of the bore, okay, it's just great. You can just leave that in there, turn up the pressure, just walk away, start tidying up the van, start tidying everything away, and you can come back at any point to check when the water coming out of the gun looks like so. You just don't have to do anything. It's, it's just, we found that to save us so much time and money, it's crazy, because most people, would stand here for ages just pulling the trigger and holding the gun, holding the gun, and it's just like, seriously, there's better things you could be doing. Um, packing up the van, talking to the customer, pricing up another room. So we find that that little time-saving element is key. So again, we just crank it right up. And just let it pull through. It's coming through here, here.
for me, I mean, I'm more than happy. But you can just keep going. You just leave it running. You could leave it running for five, ten minutes whilst you pack up the van, and it will be absolutely crystal clear. So rather than standing here or kneeling here and boring you guys stupid, you get the principle. When you've done, we just put everything back. That's one of my guys cleaning the floors you can hear. And then again, just tidy everything up and it's, it's just good to go. That, that element there has saved us so much time and money. So, there you go, that's a deep, a deep clean for us. Cool. Right. How do you handle the tip? Okay, we're gonna talk about cleaning the tip and the guard, okay? The tip, okay, I'll give it to Stefan. Uh, these little hourglasses, what are they? It's uh, for cleaning the tips, um, so you can put them in, uh, transport them easily, and um, you have uh, liquid in there uh, which, uh, which um, cleans a bit and also protects um, the tips from drying out. So even if you don't have cleaned them properly and there is some paint inside the borehole, um, it's still in the liquid and it will not dry out and you just can use it next time, blow the tip through and it will still work. Um, the nice thing is you just open it, um, not so easy because there's a, a child, a a child lock protection. in there. Um, and you just put in the tip, there's uh, quite a lot of space in it, um, you close it again, um, your fingers are dry, you're not in contact with the, with the liquid, you turn it around and the liquid um, drops down um, and the tips will be um, safe uh, in the uh, cleaning liquid. Um, without any problems and you will can store them that way and um, um, the next time you pick them up you can transport them all quite easy and it's available uh, from two different suppliers um, pretty much the same thing and um, yeah that's how it works we've, we've used those for our tips quite a lot but we still have an issue with the guard so what we found is you can buy the actual fluid in bigger quantities uh, in bigger bottles we just get a nice little um, pot that's got a good sealant around it drop these in and um, we just use the same because it's, it's like a like a mini paint stripper and I never ever clean my tips and leave them out to dry I always leave my tips in a solution so when I open the pot I can put them straight in the guard the car the guard would just wipe clean the tip would go in and you just start spraying there's no downtime it's just a simple maintenance hack that you just yeah we just use those. When you do that, take care on the uh, seals uh, because often they, they vanish and um, uh, people just uh, put on the, uh, the um, heads again, the uh, tip holders again, and they've forgotten about the, the seals and then uh, they're wondering about why the, the, the gun and the tips are dripping. So always uh, make sure uh, the seals are there when you reassemble the, uh, the tip holder. Okay. One of the things we found with using, let's say, third party, something that you found and thought, oh, it might be really good to, to use instead. The problem we've had is sometimes the rubber seals, um, they will swell or crack. So we just found it's not worth trying to cut corners. It's easier just to stick with something that's actually being designed for the right purpose. It's just we've learned the hard way, so you guys don't have to. Um, what are the maintenance factors have we got? within your little bundle there, Stefan? Um, yeah, when we talk about uh, maintenance liquids, there are pretty much three different kinds of liquids available. It's, um, first of all, for piston pumps. Yes. You need um, piston lube, piston oil. It's available from every supplier. That's usually that kind of bottles. Um, it helps if it's, it's a bit longer and you have a tip here um, so that you can uh, get as close as possible to the, um, um, to the piston. Uh, one one thing which many users uh, take in or they have a problem with, um, they're trying to use it, nothing is coming out, and they're cutting it off. For example, here we have TDSL liquid from Greco, and people start cutting it off, uh, but there is already a right uh, a hole yeah. in the right size. They're cutting it off, and then too much comes out. Um, when you have a new bottle, uh, just get it off, 
and you will see it's sealed here. Just take it off. The hole is already there. You don't need to cut anything. Yeah. So do that. Um, it's it's the hole. It's the right size to apply the right amount of oil. If you cut it, you will you will waste oil and put too much oil in your in your pump. So, so where do we, just where do we put that? And you put that right to the piston. <coughs> um, so okay. What we've got is here's the piston. Okay. So what you have to do is just crank a little bit in there. Okay. And generally when you're priming the machine, so when we've got it, let's say down here, and you can see the piston went up in there. So we just add a little bit of lubricant in there. Uh, pretty much either when you start or when you clean the machine. Okay. Just a few drops. Because if you don't, we've had this before, what happens is with, with these bigger machines with the stem, what happens is the lube will run down the stem into the paint, mix with the paint, and then you end up with contaminants and therefore you have a really bad finish on your, on your well, your woodwork or your doors, yeah. etc. Uh, the other thing we use this for is pretty much on the machine a bit of servicing is where we've got threads. So we put a little bit in here, we would add a little bit where we crank open here, a little bit on here. And one of the other things we use is we add it here where the, the trigger is. Okay, so we always add a little bit just inside here just to keep this lubricant so we keep the trigger. Most people find that um, when they say their, their needle's sticking, it's not, it's a build up of paint and poor lubrication here. And when you pull the trigger, it won't bounce back. So we find that there's a few little areas we just use this as well. It's just, just again, just little pointers. So that's, that's the lubricants. Uh, yeah, what, what else? Um, it's um, pump conditioner as well, available from um, all the big brands. It usually you mix a certain one with water, and um, you use it if you store the pump uh, for a longer time. Um, let's say you're not working for a week or longer, um, then I would recommend that you take uh, um, such a pump conditioner like uh, Pump Armor from Greg or from Wagner. That's easy clean or there's some from Farmax as well. So um, your choice, you, you, you mix that 30 to 1 with water, suck it into the pump, leave it in the pump. Don't leave it under pressure, the pressure should be released. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and you just um, leave it in the pump. Um, these liquids are also good um, if you have to store it uh, under in sub-zero conditions. So if you have, uh, if it's freezing in the winter, um, um, if possible, I will always try to avoid um, um, storing my paint sprayer under zero degrees. But if you don't have another choice because you have to keep in the uh, keep it in the car, then that is a safe one to do. Um, if you have to leave it there in that uh, temperatures, you should make sure that it's stored with uh, that. Uh, pass me the just pass me the pump armor. Okay. Um, for me. This time of year, anywhere from October through till March. Last year we had it maybe three or four times where we just were busy, we flushed it, we left it in the van because pretty much that's what most people are going to do from one job to another. And it froze, okay? And it, the hose froze. So we had to wrap it around a radiator and it took a day for it to thaw. So it takes no time at all. Once you've done a, a deep clean like this and the, the blue and the mixture is cool, run it through the pump, run it through the hose. I, I tell, to be honest with you, you will lose a full day spraying if you don't do it that way. And for me, if you've got a great car machine, use great car pump armor. If you've got a Wagner machine, use Wagner. If you're spending money on these machines, then I say just put the right stuff through it, don't mess around. It's not worth trying to cut corners, because if you have a problem, and I brought this to your service centre, and you stripped it. You, you, you were lucky with the that just uh, the hose was fro uh, frozen. Uh, we have every year in the winter we have uh, customers coming in with broken pumps because um, uh, here in Germany the uh, temperature conditions are often a bit uh, um, more severe yeah, than in the UK. And um, it happens that people uh, don't think of it and just leave it in the van or somewhere um, with, with, without heat heating. And um, then um, the liquids in the pump will freeze and they'll just break the pump. So um, sometimes we have had cases where um, the packings and uh, um, also the cylinder, for example, valves were damaged just from freezing. 
um, and it's unnecessary and will cost a lot of money for the uh, repair. From, from my side, the cost of actually repairing is one aspect. The cost of losing labour, because this, this machine, this machine in particular is, I mean for me it's equivalent to, I don't know, anywhere between six and eight guys on site, the amount of work it gets through. I can't afford that loss of labour. So just this time of year, just take, take extra care, to be honest with you. So cool, that's a little bit of service in for you guys, and we'll have more coming later on, but just, just get the gear in over the next few months, look after your machine, a little bit of service in, you'll be thankful for it. Excellent. Thanks, Stefan. Thanks. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.